Hello everyone, I'm Salvatore Forte, Innovation Manager for Flexel Solution. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, voice recognition technology for drug delivery devices. There are two major trends that are becoming relevant to the medical device industry. The first one is the growth in the market for remote patient monitoring. And so the ability of a medical device to collect more health-related data from the patient while he or she is carrying out the therapy from home. This is important because uh, those data can then later be shared with a medical cloud. And so the physician can analyze those data remotely to verify how the patient is coping with the therapy and make better informed decisions also to eventually adjust the treatment uh, based upon those real-time feedback. The second one is around enhancement of user interfaces. And to build a little bit of context here, let's take specifically the case of an auto-injector that in this age of home therapy has surely become one of the most adopted kind of uh, drug delivery devices. More than often, auto-injectors are perceived as cumbersome devices do, and so very difficult to deal with for self-administration treatments. This, of course, tends to limit their patient acceptance, and so there is a real need for more patient-centric devices with special attention to user interfaces. Speaking of which, we all know that the voice recognition technology is extremely popular nowadays in many consumer applications, with tons of voice assistants deployed in a smartphone, smart speakers, or remote controls. And due to COVID, there has been possibly even a stronger demand for touchless voice interfaces in order to limit as much as possible the exposure to contaminants. So we believe that uh, touchless voice interfaces are likely going to become soon one of the most attractive features to integrate into the next generation of medical devices as well. Obviously, the voice interface delivers a simpler and more intuitive user experience. For example, the patient could simply talk to a drug delivery device in order to start the injection. Afterwards, you may also want to change the injection speed on the fly, or either pause or terminate the injection prior to its completion. And everything without necessarily having to touch any buttons. So only thing that you need to do is just say the word and the device will operate according to that. Besides using voice to operate the device, we might also want to think of a new way of leveraging the very same voice user interface to establish some form of a dialogue with the auto-injector which, for instance, might query the patient on how he's feeling that day prior or after the injection, and again, collect those feedback exclusively through voice. This supplements the auto-injector with the patient monitoring capabilities and overall provides a more effective way to increase engagement with the patient using these types of devices. Voice technology may sound relatively simple, but actually, there are a lot of challenges that have to be addressed in order to end up with a successful implementation that of course works well from the user viewpoint, but at the same time meets the technical requirements for integration into battery-operated auto-injectors that normally have limited processing resources and a very small power budget. When you talk to electrical engineers designing these types of products, you can rest assured that one of the major challenges they have to deal with is saving and extending as much as possible the battery lifetime and making sure that the overall system can live within the estimated power budget. Equally important is reliability, so we also want to make sure that the voice recognition works successfully in presence of background noise. And this is not trivial considering that the auto-injector is normally exposed to high level of interference sound that are coming not only from the environment, and I guess we all know that homes can be far from quiet sometimes, but even more importantly generated by the device itself and uh, caused primarily by the motor and the movement of any mechanical parts associated to them. Having all that in mind, in Flex we have created Mic, which is our reference platform of a voice-enabled audio injector. And in order to understand ideally how our voice solution will position within the broader marketplace, let's take a real quick look at the voice products that are available in the market today. We notice that there are basically a couple of extremes. On the lower end of the spectrum, there are very simple, non-connected devices that are based on ultra-low power computational cores 
and that are able to understand no more than one or two keywords, obviously there is very little chance to deploy any meaningful use case for medical devices with such a limited vocabulary. On the other extreme, there are very complex voice solutions that can understand a full natural speech, although they require a lot of processing power, and so they can only be deployed in the cloud. And we shall point out that actually none of them is a medical grade solution though. So we decided to create Mike to somehow fill this gap that we discovered upon market research. Mike implements for the first time an embedded voice user interface that allows to operate the auto injector exclusively with the vocal commands. The implementation is specifically optimized for battery-powered devices, and all the voice recognition software is executed locally on the device, requiring no connection to external cloud. It works out of the box, so users won't need to either authenticate or train the device with their voice. You just need to know the set of keywords, and you are pretty much set to go. In addition, it's important to mention again that the reliability of the words recognition is really challenging here, since, as we said, the auto-injector is exposed to a lot of background noise uh, generated by the device itself and caused primarily by the motorized drug extrusion system. In order to solve this issue, we developed some uh, proprietary signal processing algorithms that can cancel out an interference sound and still feed the keyword recognition engine with the clear voice input. Last but surely not the least, all the software has been developed and validated according to medical regulatory standards. Let's now take a deeper look of our voice solution, which combines different pieces of technologies under a single device. Starting from the hardware, the system is based on a very inexpensive architecture that features a Cortex-M7 microcontroller, two digital microphones for directional sound capture, so one microphone on the front facing the direction where the user expected to talk to the device, whereas the second microphone on the rear side is meant more to record the ambient sound. And finally, there is an audio accelerometer that is used specifically to pick up all the noise generated as mechanical vibration through plastics. It's important to look at the voice solution holistically. So besides the hardware, there is the software framework that actually, if possible, is what truly makes the voice-enabled product come alive. The software framework consists of several modules, which are integrated as software libraries along with the embedded firmware that runs on the microcontroller. Everything starts off with some basic PDM to PCM data format conversion. Then at the very core of the signal chain, that is an audio front-end, that is made up of a suite of algorithms that are used all together to pre-process the audio input stream. Those include some digital filtering, automatic gain control, and adaptive interference cancellation. As the name implies, those algorithms can quickly adapt to changing noise, which means they can recover very quickly from instantaneous transition that might happen, for instance, when the motor is changing the speed. And this, of course, would result in a completely different data spectrum. The audio front end is truly crucial to get the best performance out of the voice system. Finally, there is an automatic keyword recognition engine that is based on an embedded machine learning model that is executed directly at the device edge. And this is a big differentiation if compared to traditional smart speaker implementations, because again, does not require any connection whatsoever to external voice services in the cloud. Advancements in machine learning have been key in driving a lot of innovation in the voice processing space. Today, there are improved keyword recognition models with lower false acceptance, which basically means they do not accidentally trigger the system when you didn't say the word, and that still require minimal computational power and a small memory footprint to function. This improvement is what has made possible to move everything from cloud to edge, which is also helping a lot in terms of uh, data privacy concern and security, because instead of having to send all the voice data to the cloud, you can now process them locally on the device. So if you wish, the voice from the user never leaves the device. This potentially also leads to lower cost implementation because the voice recognition software can work completely offline. And so you won't necessarily need to add the additional cost of connectivity in order to get it to work. 
As anticipated, uh, one opportunity that we envision uh, is to use the voice user interface uh, to collect the feedback from the patient uh, during the course of therapy. A typical case study we might think of is about a patient that is going through a pain relief therapy. So right after the injection is completed, uh, we can uh, use the device to ask the patient uh, what is the level of pain perceived that day. And so we keep on collecting those feedback over time and we can share them with the doctor who can better understand how the patient is responding uh, to the therapy. Limiting the request of additional information with a voice recognition system only when the patient is actually supposed to use the device to perform the therapy adds very little extra burden on the patient. And so we believe it's less likely to trigger any form of rejection towards this new additional feature. Let me now show you how our voice solution is able to eliminate all the noise coming from the interior of the device. In this example, we have been interrogating the auto-injector with a set of six different vocal commands that have been sent to the device also in the presence of the noise coming from the model. Obviously, in this case, the microphone also picks up a lot of background noise besides the user voice. On the left side, you can see what the microphone is actually picking up without any sort of uh, signal processing up front. The voice from the user is represented by those uh, vertical groups of colored bands, whereas the horizontal lines represent uh, more of the noise uh, generated by the model. From the spectrogram, you can clearly see that in this case, there is a whole bunch of noise across the full spectrum, and you can barely distinguish any useful voice uh, content in that. On the right side, you see instead uh, what actually happens when our audio front-end kicks in and cleans up the audio input stream with all those noise components that we could see before that are now actually completely deleted away. From an engineering characterization perspective, uh, we also wanted to verify the performance of the system in terms of uh, keyword recognition success rate also in the presence of the interference sound generated by the motor assembled into the auto injector and running up to full speed. And the equivalent sound pressure level of uh, such an interference sound was measured around 68 dBA. The device was tested with a set of uh, six keywords that are somehow meaningful to the drug delivery use case scenario. And those are start injection, suspend, continue, speed up, slow down and abort, which also exhibit a different phonetic. Moreover, the tests were performed with the audio front-end either disabled or enabled in order to understand how the audio front-end was able to eventually affect the statistics when it is activated in the attempt of improving the quality of the audio input stream by eliminating all the noise from the environment as well as the one generated by the device. The results demonstrate that the voice recognition engine uh, exhibits a success rate of 100% in quiet environment, even with the audio front end completely disabled. Conversely, the performance of the voice recognition system is uh, negatively affected by the presence of noise, and score drops down to 52% if no signal processing at all is performed up front. However, the activation of the audio front end greatly improves the score and the success rate goes up again to 94%. Let me now show you a video of the device while it is being used in a typical real case scenario. I'm fine.
start injection. Speed up. Slow down. Suspend. Continue. At Flex, we operate one of the world's Start largest injection. and most diverse supply chain networks. With 10,000 supply chain professionals and over 50 years Speed of experience, up. we can help you minimize risk and complexity Suspend. throughout your supply chain. We have sites in over Continue. 30 countries offering you forward and reverse logistic services Abort. and where you need them. So in conclusion, I will say that on one side, there is a general need of collecting more data from the patient in order to derive more actionable data-driven insights about their health condition. At the same time, patient also demands a simpler to use devices with the user-friendly interfaces that hopefully will ease their therapy journey. Voice recognition technology proves to be an excellent candidate to address those two needs. An advancement in software algorithms and uh, tiny machine learning models for edge processing truly set the stage for successful integration of embedded voice interfaces into brand new drug delivery devices. Mike demonstrates accurate common recognition and a quick response time uh, even under severe noise, thus unlocking the ability of controlling the auto-injector exclusively by voice. And one thing that I did want to mention is that the comma set, as well as the language, can be easily personalized to accommodate for different usability models and the tailored user experience. That's all for today. Thank you for the attention, and I hope to see you next time.